it's related to who has the clout in Washington, who is able to get stuff done, why does the policy we have in this country look the way it does, why is our country going bankrupt, why cannot Congress stop printing money? The answer is embedded, and the solution to this problem is embedded in this piece of legislation. Congress won't deal with it. There are two mechanisms by which we can have amendments to the United States Constitution to fundamentally address this so we have, so we have a campaign money system that allows the will and well-being of the people of the United States of America to be expressed in policy. One route is through Congress, two-thirds of whom can propose an amendment, and an exactly parallel route is through the power of the states, through you folks sitting here in the room. I don't have to pay $1,000 or $5,000, as I do do, because I have worked on issues in Washington, to even get a four-minute meeting with a member of the United States Senate. I don't have to do that with folks here in the room. I trust you folks. And there, that's why the framers of our Constitution back in 1787, put this parallel route in to allow you folks sitting here in the room to address this kind of problem that Congress will not address. And you have the power to do this, and I trust you to do a good job. So I'm urging you very, very much to address this corrupted, crony capitalist system we have in Washington, address this problem, and uh, move ought to pass on, uh, on uh, HCR2. Thank you very much for your time. The federal government is established by the states. It was that way originally. It really ought to be considered the, uh, 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 the way things are today. Unfortunately, many people in America, particularly over the last 100, maybe 150 years, have been, uh, have been kind of indoctrinated into a way of, of perceiving the federal government as being the master or as being the, the, the pinnacle of authority if you will. In our republic, and make no mistake, this is a republic, our representative democracy, or our practices using democratic means to elect representatives so that our republic can function, is one that clearly specifies that the federal government is our servant, not our master. So these uh, these resolutions, HCR 2 through 6, really, that we've been hearing, all deal with this mechanism provided to us by Article 5 in our Constitution that enable us as citizens who directly elect our local representatives to our state legislatures to have a vehicle as, as a group of uh, activists, if you will, and local legislators to address some of our concerns about the way that the federal government is behaving, and some of the missteps, overreaches, and abuses of power, uh, the scope of their power, and the jurisdiction within which they operate, and to uh, essentially rein them in, to borrow a colloquial term. And we have that legal, moral, um, and functional uh, uh, du uh, duty and vehicle available to us as concerned citizens to do just that. There's no reason we shouldn't use it. It's there for a reason. In fact, it is as language inserted into the Constitution specifically to serve as a safeguard in the event that federal overreach becomes unmanageable and untenable. I believe that day has arrived. The basis of the whole thing is keeping big money um, out of politics. Uh, money seems to be ruling everybody and everything. And it's got to be changed. We've got to get big money out of politics and allow the people to be able to do their business, the politicians especially, For to sure. do their business. And if they're beholden to big money uh, contributors, then they can't, uh, they can't do their job. They've got to do what the contributors gave them money to do. This year when I was... Um, had announced that I was running for office, I had gotten a telephone call from somebody in the state that said, uh, we have a check for you. And I said, for what? And they said that, um, uh, just so you can have it for your campaign. And I said, well, I'm running on no signs, uh, no money, no nothing. I'm just putting my name on the ballot. And they said, well, you know, take the check and just deposit it. And when you need it, you can use it. And I said, no, I don't want it. Don't send it. Uh, if you do, I'm going to rip it up. Well, that's important. You know, that's keeping big money out. We don't want the money to be the major portion of any election.
you know, let the people get elected by the people. It's the people that, uh, that that's important. I think they put into office who they trust and want to be there, and big money doesn't have to put us there. Well, that was a resolution for a, uh, uh, a, uh, a constitutional meeting to react against the federal takeover of the sovereign states. Amend the Constitution so that you can enforce something. If you don't have it in the Constitution, you have nothing to enforce. They seem to uh, donate money for people that they want. And of course, there's probably promises that they're going to get. People are not, uh, corporations are not people. And uh, corporate money shouldn't be used for uh, candidates for office to use as campaign money. It should be strictly uh, private people who are supporting the candidate uh, for donating to them for their election. We've got a bought and paid for Congress. People collect money and it's perfectly legal and in return for the campaign money they deliver policy positions uh, consistent with the wishes of those who contribute the money. And the problem with that is the, the well-being of the, the average United States citizen is left out of the equation. We have a bill here in New Hampshire, HCR 2, that would, uh, it's an application for a constitutional amending convention at which delegates to that convention would go to work crafting language to be brought back to hopefully 38 states which would adopt it. That language would deal with the fact that we need to uh, restore uh, primacy of power to the to the American people and separate uh, re reduce the power of big money on, on Congress particularly we have a bought and paid for Congress a direct result of the campaign funding system we now have and Congress is not going to fix this we've known about this problem for decades this problem will be fixed by the states through in our case here in New Hampshire we have HCR2 and uh, HCR2 will launch when 34 states decide to do this, it will launch a constitutional amending convention, and those delegates, as I mentioned, will craft language to deal with these issues. And I trust these delegates to wrestle with the issue and come up with clear, uh, understandable, and broadly supportable language to be brought back to the 38 uh, ratifying states. Congress has known that they could do this stuff for a long time. Uh, these positions and these uh, proposals are not new, so that's why a 28th Amendment on this subject is probably needed. The states are going to have to step in and demand by amending the Constitution that we have some system to separate the power of big money, which has uh, supplanted the primacy uh, of, of the ordinary voter over policymaking in, in Washington. I'm just going to read you some quotes from several United States presidents about this process. If I might, to answer your question, I'll, I'll begin with George Washington. It should be remembered that the constitutional door is open for such amendments as shall be thought necessary by two-thirds of the states. President Abraham Lincoln, uh, this country with its institutions belong to the people who inhabit it. Whenever they shall grow weary of the existing government, they can exercise their constitutional right of amending it. I will venture to add that to me the convention modes seems preferable. President Dwight D. Eisenhower, quote, through their states' legislatures and without regard to the federal government, without regard to the federal government, the people can demand a convention to propose amendments that can and will reverse any trends they see as fatal to true representative government, unquote. Uh, President Ronald Reagan, quote, it is clear that we must rely on the states to force Congress to act on our balanced budget amendment. He was talking about that particular example. Fortunately, our nation's founders gave us the means to amend the Constitution through action of the state legislatures. So you're hearing from, from among the most esteemed presidents our country has ever had that this is a power that is given to us. And I know there are mechanical debates about how it will work, but I, I will answer as briefly as I can. The Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution reserves to the states and the people powers not expressly delegated to Congress or the federal government. And there is no power granted to Congress to interfere with this parallel path given to the states to bring forth amendments to the states. There are two parallel paths 
Congress has the power to shape amendments to bring back to the 38 states for potential ratification, and you here in this legislature and, and, and 33 other legislatures of this country have the power in a parallel path without interference by Congress to bring a shaped amendment or amendments back to the states, the 38 states, for potential ratification. So the structure of the Constitution, clearly created by the framers and unanimously adopted by, by, by delegates to the Constitutional Conventions unanimously, expressly and specifically for the purpose of bypassing a Congress they thought might one day become corrupt and unaccountable to the people. And that day has arrived. And, and so this parallel path given to us by the framers is now available for you folks in this committee to endorse.